Hey, welcome to another 3D Quick Tips video. I wanted to talk about the Adobe Camera Photoshop Draw Filter. Um, I use it on a lot of the images I make and photos that I edit. I used it on this image. I'm not going to obviously show everything that went into this image, but I just wanted to show the tool and its basic functionality. So here we have a, excuse me, we have a raw render on a black background. Nothing special. So we're going to go into the Camera Raw Filter and let's take a look at this. So if you have Photoshop CC, you'll have the Camera Raw Filter right here. If you have CS6, you won't. Camera Raw Filter in CS6 only works on raw images, to my knowledge. Um, but anyway, as a filter in CC, let's load it up. And it'll take a little bit to pop up because it's a very slow thing to open. Uh, if we press F on our keyboard, it'll full screen this. There's also a button right here. At the top left hand menu, we have the typical things. We have zoom in and out, control and alt clicking will do this. We have the hand for moving when you're zoomed in. We can do operations like crop, we can do spot removal, red eye removal, adjustment brush, radial filter, and graduated filter. I just want to talk about the graduated filter and the adjustment brush really quickly, and then we'll go into the right hand side. <coughs> So as we click this, we notice that a brush opens up. Basically what this does is it allows us to paint parts of our image and let us change properties of where this thing is painted. So if you look here, we can start changing these, these values on the right hand side and they will happen where we paint. So if we right click and go to the side, it'll make the brush smaller. We can click and paint again. And if we shift right click, it'll change the fall off of the brush. So let's go over here to color, and I'm just going to change this to red. We can change the sharpness, clarity, dehaze, a whole lot of options. Um, so this is a quick way to change maybe the value of an image, to change the uh, just anything you want that's very specific. Now, if we hit clear all down here, we just undo that. We go to the graduated filter, it's the same thing except it uses a gradient. Green is the bottom point where things are coming from, and then red is the fall off, so where it starts to stop. And we can again adjust these settings here. So I love using this a lot, um, especially when I'm trying to make the bottom of an image darker than the other side or the top. So let's go back to the hand or the wand, which brings up the tab on the right side. And this is basically all of the primary functions of this tool. So we have our first here on the basic tab. We have you know typical things, temperature, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, um, and clarity, vibrant sat saturation. So I like to use clarity a lot. Clarity can add a lot of punch to your image, but it can also make it look a little bit too much and look bad. So I like to, one thing I like about this tool is adding subtle variety and subtle effects to things to make it pop, but not make it look overdone. I think it's really important to try and not go too crazy. Uh, vi vibrance, I like to use just a little bit to make things a little more colorful without being a little bit overly saturated. Um, sometimes you can use them both. And then over here is the tone curve and we can use points to control the value of the image. And then we have on the next tab, we have the sharpening tab and we can add sharpness to the image. I don't usually use it here because when I'm done making an image, I like to use the actual sharpening filter instead of this one because a lot of times I will do other things and not want to commit to having sharpness this early on in the editing stage. Now the next tab is HSL slash grayscale, which I really like to add and edit specific colors and the values of those colors. So here we have saturation and we can turn up the saturation of just the yellow or any other color we want. And under hue, we can adjust the hue of the yellow. So we can make it orange, we can make it green. We can just find the right color of yellow because maybe we weren't happy with the one that we chose in Keyshot. Uh, and then we can also change the brightness under the luminance tab. So I really like to use this one a lot to kind of tweak my colors. Now in the next one, we have the split toning menu. And the split toning menu lets you change the color and or the hue and the saturation of highlights and shadows as well as the balance between them and their intensity. So if we add some subtle uh, blue, we can tint the metal a little bit blue, or we can go a little crazy and over tint everything. But still get some interesting effects that maybe not work for this image, but for something else, definitely.
what I like to do often is I just have it very subtle so it adds enough color to the image that it's not super perceptible that it's been tinted but it adds that nice variety in uh, color and tone. Under the lens correction tab we have distortion. I like to sometimes distort images to make it feel a little bit less perfect or like it wasn't just a, straight, a raw render from a perfect camera in 3D and it breaks up some of the lines a little bit and makes them less perfectly straight. Uh, Defringe is good for photography and you can remove uh, chromatic aberration and vignetting is straightforward and I'll cover it in the effects tab. And the effects tab is very nice because it has this thing called dehaze. If you add dehaze it will basically make the image a bit softer and remove a lot of contrast. So I actually like to do this in conjunction with lowering the exposure and raising the brightness. So it'll still stay soft but then we can make it a little more high contrast. Um, and then on the other side we can make it much more sharp and contrasty and it can add a little bit of punchiness and still look really nice. The next uh, setting here is grain, which I like to add to things when I'm done, very subtly, to add a bit of breakup and subtle imperfection to the image, and it often softens up a lot of the edges. I like to use this for my graphic things as well. Uh, you can change the amount, the size, and the roughness of the grain. And then under here we have vignetting, that has a lot of settings, a lot more than the previous one in the lens correction tab, so I prefer this one. As you can see, when we make it brighter, we can adjust the midpoint, the roundness, and the feather of this uh, vignetting. So I like to keep it pretty, pretty subtle, so if I make it brighter in the corners, it's usually under uh, the double digits in the single, and then same thing with vignetting, I usually don't like to go above 20 or keep it even lower than that because uh, I like to use it very subtly to add value variation but not super super noticeable and overdone. Um, down here we have the ability to click the magnification that we want where we can hit fit in view. Um, so basically that's some of the most important things in this tool set and once we are done we can hit OK if you go down here though, you can also choose to see how your images look before and after. So when we're done, we just go over here and hit OK. And we'll commit to this image. It's worth noting that you have to have everything you want to edit on the same layer as this, this filter only edits a single layer. So I often save this process till the very end. Um, that way I can just kind of collapse everything and, and edit the, the final image and give it these subtle final touches. Uh, one other quick thing I want to touch on is the lens correction filter under the camera raw filter. And if we just bring it up really quick, the things that I like to use in it are the chromatic aberration and then the remove distortion. Remove distortions just like in the, in the camera raw filter, but the chromatic aberration if you put stuff on opposites of each other. So we put the green and magenta here, and this one here. We can start to change the colors of the chromatic aberration. So we get blues and yellows, and we have green and blues. Um, yeah, so those are a lot of my favorite quick tools and filters for adding subtle, subtle changes to things, or just editing images in general, photos, anything, whatever. Yeah.